Hi, this is Travis with another video for you guys. So today I'm going to be talking about cable exercises. And so cables have been around for quite a long time. I think they came along a little after dumbbells. Uh, definitely been around before bands and before the TRX, uh, which are also great tools. But I'll show you some cool ways to incorporate cable exercises into your training for those of you that are looking to mix it up that are back in the gym now. Um, I've definitely used cable exercises for a lot of my training. And I think they really lend themselves well to a few exercises I'm going to show you guys today. And some newer things that have come along with cable training are some different types of handles you can use. There's a lot of different attachments that are out there. I'm gonna primarily be doing single arm stuff today and I'm gonna be using these things called CAS handles, uh, which are really cool and I'll show you why and I'll talk a little bit about them. And I'll also show you kind of a cheaper version at the end of the video. If you're not in the market for, you know, kind of a more expensive handle like this, there's a cheap, you know, kind of cheap man's version of uh, how to make a fat handle that I found to be pretty helpful as well. Um, but I'll be talking about some of the pros and cons of this handle and then I'll be talking about some ways to also incorporate you know, some of the bigger muscle groups, you know, chest, back, some of the arms exercises, as well as some forearms in your training today using the uh, CAS handles or just a single cable attachment. So if you're interested in how to do that, go ahead and stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, so a tricep press down is a pretty bread and butter exercise. People have been doing those for a long time. Sometimes you'll see that done with a rope or with a straight bar. I'm gonna use this CAS handle today. You can use two handles, but I'm gonna show you with one. And so the way this grip works, this is a conical grip. This is just a cheap handle to show you, but some of the handles, you know, obviously that are more cylindrical, it doesn't matter. But the CAS handle, I'm gonna take the fatter part towards kind of the broader opening with my thumb and index finger here, and I'm gonna grab it that way, instead of grabbing it the opposite way where my pinky, that'd be kind of an awkward grip. So the fatter part goes on the opening of the hand here. And you'll see some guys when they do this exercise, they sort of really shrug and they come in here. What I tend to do, I don't really think Sometimes when you're using a lot of weight, you know, it's just easier to let that shoulder elevate and people kind of lock it in because they're kind of resting passively more by just the upper limits of how much they can shrug their shoulder. But if you can depress your shoulder more here, you're gonna get more scapular activation as well. So I don't ever think that you can necessarily, there's ever a reason per se why you need to do this. I know some people say they like the way it feels when they're up there, but I think it's just better for your scapula, for your posture in general, to kind of just tack that shoulder more down as you're doing a press down. And so again, I'll come in here. Now, if you're working pretty heavy on this, which you don't necessarily have to, you can use your good hand to kind of assist it to get in place because sometimes it can be a little hard on the elbow as you're coming down in here. So I'll kind of get that in place. From there, find out where you want your shoulder to be, lock that in, and then down you go. Notice how I'm holding onto a bar here. You, know, you can hold on to anything. Some people will hold on to their thigh. That part's not really that critical, but you can come in here and just do some press downs. And so you wanna just try to flex the back of that arm as you're pushing this down. Now, if you notice, I'm keeping my wrist pretty neutral there. One of the cool things you can do with this handle, which is a little unique, you can do this with a regular handle as well, but what I like to do also is as I'm pushing, so if I extend my wrist as I come up and then flex my wrist a little bit as I come down, so I get a little bit more elbow, you know, as far as when I'm forcefully doing that flexion, I get more of my elbow flexors in addition to my triceps. So that's a bonus. Now you're not gonna probably be able to do as much weight to that version, but it's just not a nice way to get two birds with one stone and also just emphasize a little more grip and forearm in addition to triceps if you want to. And so the way that would look is kind of like this. So I extend my wrist and then as I come down, I sort of curl my wrist. And so in real time, it looks like this. So it's almost like I'm scooping the weight as I push down. Now initially, if you're not used to doing that version, it's probably gonna be a lot weaker, and so you'll find there is more of a difference. But what I found is, as I started doing that more consistently, there wasn't such a difference in my strength, and so that tells me that maybe my, my forearm strength was a little lagging compared to my tricep. So I think this is just a great way to combine a few different parts to make this exercise a little more dynamic. So that's kind of my two cents on the tricep pull down with a single attachment. Okay, so just in case you want to do both at the same time, so when you buy these CAS handles, they do come as a pair. So what I've done is I've just taken a length of, of cable and I kind of cut this specifically just for some exercises. It's not too hard to come by a chain like this. And so what I'll do is I'll just take this chain, you know, somewhat symmetrically if I can, and I'll just attach it to the carabiner, okay? And so now I sort of have the equivalent of almost like a rope type of attachment with my CAS handles. And so same thing is going to apply. 
I'm going to have the fatter end towards sort of the opening of my hand where the thumb and the index finger come together. And I can come in here and I can do sort of a rope. And when you're doing a rope type of cable push down or, or a pull down, as some people call it, but I usually call it a press down, you're not just coming into your, your thighs, you're trying to spread the bar at the bottom of the movement. And so I'll come in here. Again, I'm not, I'm not so much up here. I'm more in scapular depression or shoulder blade, you know, depression. And I just kind of lock that in. Now you certainly could do this with a regular rope as well. So don't think you can only do this with, with Kez handles. This is again, just a nice way to get a little extra grip work as you're working on your triceps. And so I like that exercise a lot. And again, you can just find some chain. I mean, any hardware store probably has these. I put two extra carabiners on it, but it doesn't even have to have that. And so the so calves handles a little chain and off you go for a double tricep press down. Okay, so another tried and true exercise is a bicep curl, uh, nothing too fancy. It's kind of the same concept I just showed with the triceps, only now we're just coming up. So I take that fat part towards my thumb and my index finger. So what you're gonna do is you're going to curl this towards you. Now I'm doing more of a standard supination type of curl, which I would recommend to do for more bicep emphasis. If you're looking to get some brachialis involved, which is more of that muscle that sits behind your bicep, you could do more of a hammer style curl. And what's cool about using these cat's handles with a hammer style curl is you really do tend to get a nice exercise in your grip. This handle is really trying to take my, my wrist down into ulnar deviation, so I'm really having to force it to stay neutral. And so that's really working that that brachioradialis muscle a lot. And so you really feel the difference with these CAS handles as opposed to just a standard um, single cable attachment. But again, the emphasis on this exercise typically is not the forearms. So if you're just trying to work, you know, brachialis or biceps, don't worry so much about the grip and just go ahead and just do your standard curl. But again, with a supination, I'm really turning that hand up toward me as I curl just to get a little bit stronger contraction of the bicep. Okay, so another bread and butter exercise I really enjoy doing with cables. It's a chest press or a chest fly type of movement. And not everyone's gonna have access to a stabilizer bar, but if you do, I highly recommend using one. One of the things that's gonna happen with a cable is, as the weight gets heavier, the only way you're gonna be able to stand is you're gonna to have to start to angle yourself down. And so sometimes you'll be in a gym and you'll see somebody really angled down steeply because they're trying to use a lot of weight. And if they stood up tall, they would just, they would just fall backwards. So a cool thing you could do with a stabilizer bar is now all of a sudden you have that support where I can use a lot more weight than I typically could if I was just standing on my own two feet. And so what I'll do is I'll use this stabilizer bar here. Again, in this case, the CAS handles aren't really gonna do a lot for you. It's not gonna challenge your grip as much. You're gonna get that effect more with pulling and curl type movements. The, really the, the big advantage with a fat grip for a pressing type movement is just if you're having trouble with your hands. And so somebody has more arthritic hands or maybe they have um, you know, some, some nerve damage or they've had some atrophy and so their, their bony prominence, prominences in their hands are maybe a little more pronounced. Um, some people have neuropathy, so they have nerve pain. And so just having more surface area, just kind of something broader to hold on to, sometimes can be more comfortable in people's hands. And so in that case, I've had people who've had a little more success with fat grips and maybe something that's, that's narrower. Uh, sort of in the same way that if someone steps on your toe with a, with a you know, tennis shoe versus a high heel, it hurts a lot more with a high heel because that surface area is just much more concentrated. And so um, calves handles, again, are just, just more for comfort here, but that's what I have, so I'm gonna use them. Um, you know, again, getting these in place, you know, some people kind of grab the, the cables with, you know, really far back, and that does put a lot of strain in the shoulder. So I typically recommend, you know, bring it in close to your body just to get them in position. And then from there, you know, off you go into a chest press. And so again, you can decide on what kind of angle you want. You know, you could come a little more decline, versus you know standard or even inclined. And again, you can always play around with your, your angles here as well. So if I set this up higher, that's gonna lend itself more to decline versus down low. And gravity is also gonna tend to fight you sometimes a little more doing more of what they call like a, a low to high type of press. And so again, I'm just gonna go more for sort of standard. This is a little bit of a decline, but not too much. And again, I would just come here. Again, a fly, I would be farther out and versus a press, so I'm you know, getting more elbow bent. So the main difference again between a fly is my elbows don't tend to bend too much. I sort of pick an angle. So I'm not locked out, I'm slightly bent. And I would bring that across to really get that, that chest you know, involvement. Versus if I'm doing a press, 
it's more elbow. And if I was gonna do a single handle version, I could actually use a stabilizer bar with a split foot stance and just kind of do this here one at a time. But again, if you're gonna go pretty heavy, you're probably gonna to wanna to do both so it's not so awkward. And so again, I would just go here, kind of really squeeze the chest, you know, even squeeze the triceps. You tend to get a little more bicep with a press on a cable than you would with a, a standard barbell. And that has to do with the force trying to pull me more here, so my bicep's actually keeping it in, versus when I'm using a um, when I'm using like a barbell, it's more triceps. I'm really trying to extend my elbow. So that is actually a unique feature of a cable, is you get more biceps with a press than you typically would on, say, a uh, like a barbell. So if you're looking to get some biceps with a press, you know, obviously some people might just say, well, do a bicep exercise, and uh, certainly that doesn't make sense. But uh, again, just a cool feature. Typically though, if you don't have a stabilizer bar, you're not gonna be able to go as heavy on cables. So if you're really trying to hit chest, you may wanna do a more conventional chest exercise. You know, again, a bench press, um, either with a barbell, uh, or like, you know, what I showed in another video, the Cadillac bar, you know, you have some of those Swiss bars uh, or multi-grip bars, as well as um, like some dumbbells, because you're gonna get a little more probably emphasis on the chest than you would here, because you're gonna to have to take the weight down quite a bit to be able to stand without this stabilizing bar. Okay, and in that same vein, you can use a stabilizer bar against your chest or stabilizer pad to do more of a rowing kind of movement because sometimes those, those handles might want to pull you in. I'm not going to show that here though because I don't actually like to use a stabilizing pad as much with rowing type movements, um, but it is there for you for those of you who want to use it. So you can actually use this pad, say if I were to bring this out, you know, you could sit in a chair, you know, come down here and you can do your rows and that wouldn't be a bad exercise to do. I'm going to show more of a standing version though. So I'm going to take this, this stabilizer bar away. And so what I like to do with rows, there's no reason why, again, you couldn't come in here and do both at the same time. But again, the problem is the weight tends to want to pull you forward. What I actually like to do though, is I like to do single arm rows a lot of times with these. And so, you know, your single arm dumbbell row is more in here. And so you can kind of mimic that with a cable. Now, if you want to challenge multiple muscles at the same time, sometimes what I like to do with a single uh, attachment like this is I actually like to just stand on my own two feet and sort of use my core muscles to fight against that resistance. And so what happens here is my core muscles are having to fight to not let this thing you know, pull me in. And so what I'll do is I'll just come in here and just do a single arm. And so I'll just come in here doing just a single arm row. And so again, you can see it from this angle. So there's a little rotation as I pull it back. So I kind of let my body go with this thing and then I pull it right back. And I'm just really trying to get engaged that lat as I'm doing it. So I'm just switching my hands back and forth so you can see a few different angles. If I was doing straight sets, so I wouldn't be, you know, just switching back and forth. I would do, you know, I finish my set and I'd obviously switch sides. And again, I can play around with my angles here. So I can come up a little higher, do more of a, you know, high low type of row if I wanted to. And so sometimes you might want to do more of a pure horizontal versus more of a, a high and low. And then if I did want to load this up real heavy, just to kind of emphasize my back and not get as much of that, you know, kind of oblique and hip work, you can use a bench. And so a cool thing I could do with a bench is I can use this now so maybe I might come down here, stabilize myself on the bench as I do this exercise now. And so now I'm pretty solid. And so I could definitely use a lot more weight here because I'm stabilizing myself on the bench. And again, I would just switch sides and then come to the other one. And so again, this is pretty light here, but I'm just giving you guys a show of how it would work. And so that would be the weight if I'm really trying to maximize uh, the recruitment of the muscles in my back and I'm not trying to work other things. So again, there's a time and a place for both. And you know, again, if you were more maybe in the bodybuilding and the strength camp, you might want to just lock it in sometimes, you know, use that bench to really get that strength. What's really cool though is when you're using a fat handle like this, it actually may not even be your back. Uh, your hand might have a hard time holding this, at least initially. But again, the cool thing that happens with these handles is in the beginning, you tend to be most limited by your grip strength. With time though, eventually your hands get strong enough where I feel like I'm at a point now where sometimes my back actually is the limiting factor before my hands get tired. So people that tell you that fat grips aren't as good for your you know, back muscles on a row, 
I would say, well, it just probably means that your hands aren't strong enough yet. So if you're willing to grit and bear sort of that initial period of getting your hands strong, um, you eventually can get to a point where you get a pretty good workout um, for your back or whatever muscle you're trying to emphasize, even though you're using a fat handle. And so that's my two cents on the single arm ropes. Okay, so I just want to take a second to talk about the CAS handle. What makes it really cool, in my opinion, is this sort of more conical shaped grip. So it's fatter on one side than it is on the other. And so that tends to conform a little more anatomically with our hand. Now it's not completely ergonomic because it doesn't have any grooves that completely conform to the hand like, like almost like an ergonomic mouse. Um, but it is a little better than just a straight cylinder. And so this is actually the, the fatter. So uh, the CAS handles by, by uh, I think it's um, Prime Fitness, they offer two sizes. This is the larger size. And so just to give you guys an idea how, how fat it is, um, it is a little wider at the top than the fat grip, but maybe a tiny bit narrower at the bottom. But just to give you guys an idea, you know, the main goal with these really is you just want to make sure you don't completely get your hand all the way around it. So if you have bigger hands, you know, this may still not be that big for you, but I can't get my grip completely around it as opposed to, you know, if I'm having the handle like this, I can completely get my fingers all the way around it. And so that's going to give me a lot better ability to hold on to this thing than with this. And so because I can't hold on to this as well, it's going to challenge your grip more. And that's pretty much how, how fat bar, you know, or fat grip training works. Um, so I think these are pretty cool. They are pretty pricey though, and so I don't necessarily know that uh, you know everyone needs to, to shell out the money that these things cost. If you want to save yourself some money, you can definitely just get yourself some fat grips. And then you know this is just a really cheap. Uh, I don't even know it's by All Runner. Um, this this cheap handle um, I got on Amazon you know a while back, and I got it specifically just to put a fat grip on it. And so fat grips. If you notice, it's funny because they're it, it's a one inch diameter uh, in theory, but the problem when you put this on a any type of bar is that it's still open to the top but what's nice about these really thin handles is I can get this fat grip all the way around it so what I did is I just took a fat grip I put it on here and so now all of a sudden I have an attachment with a fat grip and what's really nice about this thin handle is it's all the way closed so it's actually a pretty good feel and so this will work fine for any of you who are looking to save some money I mean these handles you can get on Amazon I think it caught a couple pairs for like 10 or 15 bucks and the fat grips running around you know 30 30 ish bucks or so um, so a little cheaper than the CAS handle, and this will do just fine. And so if you're in a commercial gym that doesn't have these, you know, you certainly aren't going to probably bring these into a gym, but you can maybe bring some fat grips with you and then put it on, on an attachment if you want to get this feel. So it's kind of the cheap man's version of the, uh, of the CAS handle, just sort of a thick uh, handle. And um, again, that's my two cents on how to add some thickness to your cable train. Okay, and last but not least, I want to show you guys a cool exercise which is more specific to the grip with these CAS handles. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this CAS handle in my hand and I'm going to roll my fingers towards me. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to open my hand and close it with this CAS handle in it. And so what I'm going to do is let my hand open and then close my hand. And so this ends up being a pretty cool wrist and forearm exercise. And I like to actually do it palms down more than palms up. So I'm opening my hand just about to that point where it's almost about to fall out and then I bring it back and I do a little curl at the end. So open, close, and curl. And that's a pretty cool exercise. Again, I can switch sides just to show you from this angle. Open that hand, close it, and curl that wrist. And so that's going to really get those forearm flexors in there. To work on more of that grip and that forearm training. And that's kind of a wrist finger curl with a cast handle. Right, so that's pretty much cable training in a nutshell. I tried to show you guys some bread and butter exercises. Obviously, there's a lot more exercises out there than just the ones I've shown you today. Um, this was mainly for the upper half. I tried to show you a push, a pull, and then two accessory exercises for the elbow, you know, the curl and the triceps, and then kind of a bonus for the, the forearm and the grip. Um, you know, any complete training routine and, you know, any training routine that pretty much most of the greats have done, has consisted of a push and a pull for the upper body. So again, you're not gonna really get around doing a big press or a big roll kind of movement. This is just how to incorporate it with cables. A lot of people will tell you that cable training is more of an accessory movement. And to some extent that's true. I think with the stabilizer bar, like I showed earlier though, you can make it a more pure exercise. So with that stabilizing pad, as I showed in the chest press, you can essentially make the chest press as heavy or as strenuous as you would say a pair of dumbbells or possibly even a bench press. 
And so I think it's, it's a great variation to just stimulate the muscle a little differently than you might get with your more conventional exercises of just doing you know, barbell and dumbbell work only. Again, there's always bands you can add to mixtures as well. So look at my earlier material if you're interested in how to do that. Um, I'll probably be combining um, some attachment stuff with cables at some point. And I'm also gonna be, um, for those of you that saw my last video, um, adding in some other you know, bar and band type exercise videos as well. So a lot more content in the pipeline. I'm trying to get to it as much as I can. I've uh, been a little busy lately, but I'm gonna definitely try to keep this going. So if any of you have any other special requests as far as content, let me know. And as always, I hope you guys have some fun.